What is up everybody? Welcome back to Godspeed Zero Z. Now today I want to address something I've had so many questions about here recently. And as many of you already know, Jeep has already released the information that they are going to be using the 3.0 liter twin turbocharged inline six cylinder. And since that information has been released, I've had so many questions about what platforms it's going to be in, what vehicles are actually going to see it, and how soon before we're going to see one in real life. So, uh, Aside from that, I want to go over my personal opinions on it and what platforms it should work really well with um, and speculate on some of the other things that they haven't really released yet. So I want to make this video that way we can go ahead and address it and it'll all be out there. So just to get started, as we all know, the big V8s are making an exit pretty much from every platform that we have. So as the replacement for motors like the 5.7 liter Hemi and the 6.4 liter, the 392, they have a standard output and a high output version of this 3.0 liter twin turbo charged. The standard output is rated for over 400 horsepower and 450 foot pounds of torque. And I believe the max boost on that one is 22 and a half pounds. And then for the HO, the high output, we've actually got over 500 horsepower and over 475 foot pounds of torque, depending on which application it's put in. Um, of course, we already know from the release info that it will debut in the Grand Wagoneer L first, and it will have the high output version of that motor. So they're gonna test that out. That'll be in 2022 for a couple of the 2022 model year Grand Wagoneer Ls. And then past that point, it'll be going to the rest of the vehicles across the board pretty much. And they'll be introduced as early as 2023 model years. So most of the motors are already in production, so it shouldn't take that long for us to see them. And beyond that, I believe there's even talks of a PHEV version of this. I don't have too much information on that, but from what I do understand, apparently it could be maybe the 600 horsepower version of that motor. But in all things being said, just talking about the high output, you know, with max boost around 26 pounds, it's pretty stout. And of course, this new 3.0 liter Hurricane is based off the GME T4, which is already being used pretty much across the board, the 2.0 liter that you'll see in the 4XE variations of like the Wranglers. And of course, you'll even see them in the Alfa Romeos. The GME T6, the new Hurricane 3.0 liter variation of the motor, of course is based off of the 2.0 liter that's already in production. Um, now there have been mixed reviews about that 2.0, but the way that they've engineered the 3.0 liter has been pretty impressive so far. From what I can tell, the sleeves are quite a bit stronger, quite a bit more durable. It's also gonna have a cast aluminum block and overall, it just seems like it's built to handle, you know, boost. That's a big thing that the Hemis have never really been good at, uh, handling the boost. So with this motor, I feel like it's going to be a really good platform to build off of, especially if you can get that high output in a Wrangler, you know, that's putting out more power than the 392 is. It would definitely be something pretty cool. And now I know a lot of people have been saying, uh, you know, obviously this is the end of the V8s by 2023 production, pretty much the V8s won't really be much of an option especially by 2025 of course uh, as many people have already heard the next generation of the hellcat is probably even just going to be a straight ev with the v8s disappearing i am pretty happy to see the option of the 3.0 liter inline of course this is the first inline six cylinder they've made since the 4.0 liter and of course that is a iconic motor that was around in the tj and even in the yj era and they were in the XJs as well. So there's a lot of love for the inline six from Jeep already. So hopefully they're just building off what they know. And obviously they've uh, they've engineered this engine to handle the power pretty well. Seems like it's gonna be pretty stout. And like I already said, uh, built pretty aggressively already. That way you can just slap on some extra modifications and you can really, I'd say you'll really be able to get some power out of these pretty quick with just some simple stuff like normal bolt-ons, catless downpipe, tunes, even just simple bolt-ons and tunes for these turbo motors, especially the twin turbocharged six cylinders, you can get a lot of improvements in power just off of the simple things like uh, your bolt-ons and tunes. It's pretty crazy what you can get out of them, and they respond to that stuff quite a bit better than our naturally aspirated Hemis. Of course, everybody's gonna miss the sound, now, there's going to be no replacement for the sound of the V8s, but there are going to be some extra sounds we don't get in our V8s, like the turbo noise. Uh, with the Catalyst downpipe, a blow-off valve, and wastegate, it's hard to beat the sound of some big turbos just spooling up. 
So after seeing it's gonna be implemented pretty much across the board through every product from a Ram 2500, 1500 to probably the Wranglers, the Grand Cherokees, the Durangos, pretty much everything the FCA or Stellantis has to offer. It brings up some other questions like what's the towing capabilities gonna be on the new inline six cylinder Hurricane? Because if it's anything like the EcoBoost from what we've seen from other six cylinder twin turbocharged motors, is even though they have the power and the capabilities, they are at a certain disadvantage when it comes to towing, especially the fuel economy whenever it comes to towing. And then beyond that, just having uh, that reassurance of the low end torque that you get from a normal naturally aspirated motor. So with this, it will bring up some new questions in terms of fuel economy as well. If it is a better option for fuel economy, then I wanna know what the fuel economy is really gonna be over the 6.4 and the 5.7. Because even though it's going to be a V6, it will have the twin turbos. So is the fuel economy going to be mid-20s? Or is it just maybe going to be 20 miles a gallon to justify the extra five? There's going to be a lot of things that will come up. But I think there will be a lot of support for the motor itself. And for the capabilities of what it can really do. There is a lot of aftermarket support already for at least our category of cars. For the Rams, the Jeeps, the Chargers, the Challengers. Everything that's going to have this motor. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that want to take it to the edge of its capabilities and see how far they can really push it. And there's going to be plenty of aftermarket support to try that out. And just to answer a few of the other questions I've got, a few people have asked what transmission will be paired with this platform. And from what I've seen and from what we all know, the ZF8 platform, specifically, I think it's the 875 HP, like in the Rubicon 392. I think that's probably a transmission we'll see. It's obviously something that is tested. It works really well and it can definitely handle the power and it should match up pretty well the eight speed with the twin turbocharged motor. With the eight speed, they should definitely be able to map it out to really optimize the power range that it has. And the 10 speed, I don't think a 10 speed is necessarily needed. It's just what a lot of people have seen with the six cylinder twin turbos. And for my honest opinion, I'm pretty excited about it. I've always been really interested in turbo cars. I've had quite a few of them in the past. So this will definitely be something I'm definitely excited about. I'll definitely add another one as soon as they come out. Of course, we'll keep the 392, but we'll have to get one with the V6 twin turbo and see how it is. But I'm excited to see what kind of performance we'll be able to get out of it, how far you'll be able to take it, you know, pretty much stock for internals and everything like that. And then beyond that as well, I'm pretty excited to get the noises of the turbos and the Jeeps of course, uh, we've talked about putting the twin snails on the 6.4 back there too, and that's something that'd be pretty cool. But to be able to get it from the factory, of course, from a manufacturer that we already know has produced some of the craziest production vehicles and crate motors that we've seen in the last decade. I'm honestly pretty excited to be able to hear those turbo noises out of a Jeep, out of a Charger, out of a Challenger, and even a Ram 1500. It's gonna be cool to see what's really gonna happen with this new platform and see how it's adopted into all the other models that it's gonna be implemented into. It's definitely gonna be a different experience from what we're used to, but I think it could be for the better and you know we'll still keep the V8s around some way. Well, that's gonna do it for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think about the all new 3.0 liter Hurricane motor, what your thoughts are on how it's gonna be implemented into all the rest of the models. But as always, guys, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. But until next time, just take it easy.